Imagine you're playing a game of Monopoly. Everyone begins with $1,500, and as you travel around the board, players compete to purchase properties of varying prices, from Old Kent Road at $60 all the way up to Mayfair at $400. The aim is then to own a complete set of properties and purchase houses and hotels in order to charge other players rent and ultimately bankrupt them, eliminating them from the game. However, you've made some pretty bad decisions and things aren't going very well at all. So what do you do? Do you play on and simply hope for the best? Do you flip the board over in a fit of rage, sending tiny pieces of plastic and metal flying around the living room? Or do you sneak away when nobody's looking and print more money? Let's suppose you pick the latter and print yourself a nice round sum of $10,000. Suddenly the game's most valuable property, with its highest potential rent of $2,000, seems like pocket change to you. And as you navigate the board, carelessly landing on owned properties and paying their rent with ease, the overall quantity of money present in the game increases. Now everyone has more money, not just you, but there's fundamentally still the same amount of goods available. And because of this, the purchasing power of your money falls, and in response, the cost of everything rises. Old Kent Road is now worth $120, double what it used to be, and Mayfair is now $800. The money you have is now worth less than it was, and everything has gone up in price. But don't worry, you can just print more money, this time $50,000. But the same thing happens again. There's a lot more money floating around in the game, and so it loses its purchasing power. Old Kent Road now costs $1,500, and Mayfair has reached an enormous five figures. And yeah, you might physically have a lot more money, but it's worth significantly less. And so you print more, and more, and more. $100,000, $250,000, half a million dollars. And as its purchasing power falls and prices rise to match, that number just gets bigger and bigger. 1 million, 10 million, 100 million. And then you hit 10 figures. 1 billion, 10 billion, 100 billion. You get the idea. Well, this is called hyperinflation, if a little oversimplified, and it's more or less what happened in Zimbabwe in the late 90s and early 2000s. The government had made a series of bad decisions and introduced some alarmingly short-sighted policies, the most prominent of which being land reform. The president, Robert Mugabe, seized white-owned farms and gave control of them to black Zimbabweans in the hope of addressing the wrongs of British colonial rule. However, most of these new owners knew almost nothing about farming, and production subsequently plummeted. There was significantly less food, and the population was starving. And what's more, Mugabe had debts and ridiculous expenses of his own, and no money with which to pay them. So like in our game of Monopoly, Mugabe came up with the bright idea of simply printing more money. But as we've already seen, now there was just more money chasing the same finite amount of goods, which meant its purchasing power fell. A loaf of bread might have cost, say, $1, but now cost 5 Printing more money hadn't magically addressed the lack of bread, just increased its price. But nonetheless, he printed more and more money, and soon it got so extreme that the cost of bread was now in the thousands, and then the tens of thousands, and then the hundreds of thousands. But it kept going. He printed money so quickly and in such vast quantities that it devalued with unimaginable speed. We're talking days or even hours. As money flooded the market and cost dramatically increased, people were desperate to get rid of their cash as quickly as they possibly could, because even that evening it could be worth half of what it was in the morning. And yet the government kept on going, and whilst the banknotes grew in number of zeros, their purchasing power plummeted even quicker, and the cost of everything skyrocketed to match. Bread now cost literally millions, but even then it just kept on going. And soon those millions turned into billions, and then into trillions. As ridiculous and disastrous as it may have been, out of the whole fiasco were born some pretty unique banknotes. Now, I do need to thank banknoteworld.com for providing these notes. They came in this cool presentation folder, and although this isn't a sponsored video, they did send me these for free, for which I am very grateful. They even have a super interesting YouTube channel themselves. The first is a $10 trillion bill. That's 13 zeros. And as well as a lot of zeros, the front of the note also features the Cheremba balancing rocks, a naturally occurring geological wonder near the country's capital, Harare. These rock formations are incredible, and are intended to represent environmental protection, development, and prosperity for the country, something they spectacularly fell short of. The front also features a Zimbabwe bird in colour-changing ink, 
the national emblem of Zimbabwe as seen on the country's flag, and towards the left, there's a security strip again in colour changing ink, repeating RBZ, the Reserve Bank of Zimbabwe. In terms of microprint, there's not really a lot going on, as can only be expected of a banknote mass produced on such short notice. But interestingly, the only microprint I could see appears to have a typo. The border of the rectangle to the right of the rocks is made up of tiny numbers, which actually read 100 trillion, not 10 trillion. Again, I'd imagine this is a product of the rush nature of these notes. On the right of the note, there's a feature called the see-through register, where the denomination is partially printed on the front and the remainder on the reverse, so that when held up to a light source, the image is complete. It's a security feature which makes them harder to counterfeit, as criminals have trouble lining the two sides up accurately. And lastly, there's an underprint image of a cow and some wheat grains, seen more easily when exposed to UV light. On the reverse, there's an image of the Reserve Bank of Zimbabwe's headquarters, the country's tallest building at 120 metres in height, in stark contrast to the ruins of Great Zimbabwe shown on the right. Great Zimbabwe was a country's capital, built almost a millennium ago, but was abandoned and fell into ruin in the 15th century. The 50 trillion is almost identical on the front, except for a slightly different shade of green. The reverse sees the Kariba Dam, a gigantic curved concrete dam that straddles the border between Zimbabwe and Zambia, and sits at the northern shore of Lake Kariba, the world's largest man-made lake. There's also an African bush elephant, the largest living terrestrial animal, native to much of Zimbabwe in central and southern Africa. Finally, the 100 trillion again is almost identical to the 10 and 50, except in colour, and the number of zeros on this is again just absurd. The reverse features Victoria Falls, regarded as the world's largest waterfall, again sitting on the border between Zimbabwe and Zambia. The waterfall was named in honour of Queen Victoria, although many still know it by its indigenous name, the smoke that thunders. And on the right is a Cape Buffalo, again found over much of central and southern Africa. In fact, both the elephant and buffalo can be seen on the banknotes of neighbouring South Africa. By 2009, hyperinflation had got so extreme that even $100 trillion were rendered completely worthless, giving the country no choice but to abandon the Zimbabwe dollar. Foreign currencies started being accepted instead, including the US dollar, the South African Rand and the Euro, and as a result, consumer prices finally began to stabilise. Today these currencies continue to be used. Once again, I just want to say thank you to Banknote World for sending me these for free, and I really hope you enjoyed the video.